today I'm going to talk to you about building easy to debug Windows services. So first I want to give you a comparison of what it's like to build a Windows service today in the way that most of you will probably be used to doing. And then I want to introduce you to a little package that I maintain called Really Simple Services. That's, that's goal is to make that process a little slicker and to help speed up your development workflow. So I'm just going to do what, what you would normally have to do to build a new service. So what we're going to do here is walk through what you would normally do to create a Windows service. So when you build Windows services most people would like to F5 debug through their code to make sure things work, run their unit tests, and in order to facilitate this you normally have to build three projects. You, you have to build a an assembly, which is just a class library, so I'm going to first add that. First we'll need a new solution. Let's just do this, console application one, that's fine. So we're going to build a solution with a program in it. Now this will act as our F5 runnable shell. So let's just drop a console read line in here and stick a message on the screen. If I run this, there we go, we've got an application that runs and then waits for user input. But in order to, to test this kind of logic and make sure you can implement it in a, a Windows service, you tend to have to build uh, an additional project called Core or some other fairly illogical name. So I'm just going to stick a class library in here called Core. And you would normally end up putting your, your real things in here. So my super awesome code for uh, Windows service. And once we have this, we would probably use logic that we were going to write in, in our command line app. Obviously we're not doing anything but we're invoking this so, so let's just add a method on here that we can use for demonstration. Instead of doing this, we'll call our application code. So, so far I have two projects just to write something to the screen. Now obviously this isn't a Windows service at this point, so what you end up doing is adding yet another project that's a Windows service, and I'll just leave the name as it is. So the anatomy of a Windows service is actually quite different, so if you see it has its own structure. And we'll just do a little bit of clean up here. And delete all the, the junk that the standard template adds. So the standard template adds uh, a class that derives from service base, which is the base class required to to make a Windows service, so you'll be probably pretty familiar with this. And in this kind of structure, what you probably end up doing is something like this. My app code equals new my super awesome code for a Windows service. My app code write something. Now obviously we're writing to the console in this particular stub, which really wouldn't work very well with a Windows service, so you'd probably end up with, with logging infrastructure and other things. But now, we basically have the, the standard structure that you, you require to debug a Windows service with an F5 call and also install it. So I can still run this and using install util, I can install Windows Service 1 on my system. Um, bit clunky, lots of CS projects and um, everything is a bit everywhere. 
So what I'm going to do is, is show you a, an alternative way to do this using a little open source framework. The first thing I'm going to do is just add a solution folder to fold away the old way. So I'm going to grab these things, put them in here. And go add another solution so and now I'm going to add another solution folder for our new things. So all I'm really going to do here is add a new console application. So first things first, we need to add the simple services NuGet package. So we'll just use the package manager here to do that. There it is. You'll notice that it added a bunch of references to your project. What I'm going to do now is grab the startup template from the GitHub page. So the, the GitHub URL is there. And what I'm going to do is grab this snippet. So it does a lot of things that I'm going to walk you through. first thing you'll notice is that your program class now inherits from Service Installer. This allows your, your application to install itself as a service without requiring install util. The service class is, is your application bootstrapping code. You can obviously do things before here. The, this isn't the, the only way a simple services application can look, so I would anticipate things like container registration to come before this service block. So, you pass in the command line arguments and then a list of implementations of iWindows service which is a new interface that you have to implement. So you'll notice I've got a little red class in the snippet here called my service. We're going to implement this in a minute. You also get provided with an action of T called installation settings. So when the service installer is, is invoked by simple services it will pass the service installer and the service process installer to your application code. This means that you can bit twiddle things like service names, startup types, the system account that the service will run under, without having to use the right click designer view, which isn't very well behaved with source control and is a bit kludgy. Um, you can also configure something that I've, I've implemented called a context. By default, you can add a, a default log line out, so at the moment we're using console write line, but you can just as easily map in log from net here. And there are a couple of other things on here, so there's a, a, an app cache class and a services class. So the services class is a list of the iWindows services available, so if you really need to inspect one service to another or manipulate anything from the context, you can do this. Simple Services passes the context to every implementation of iWindows service so that side-by-side -side implementations can get access to each other's data in a, a nice guarded way. So let me walk you through an implementation of an iWindows service. All you have to do is make a class, so let's implement my service. And we'll alt to that. And you might recognize this as being very, very familiar from our previous snippet. So if I open up the Windows Service snippet over here and open up the service class, you've got all this gumph that Windows generates, but the, the core of it involves a start method with arguments and an on stop. So we're going to implement something very, very similar here where we have a start method and a stop. So what I tend to do is move the app context to the top. And all you do now is, is hook your code into this My Service class. So whereas before we needed a, a whole separate project with the code in, all we need to do now is we'll grab the snippet from the old file. And we're going to drop it in here. 
and obviously you can wire up things like constructor injection here so you can do full TDD but at the moment we'll just use this as an example now we don't want a not implemented exception on stop otherwise your service is going to crash every time we stop it but now we have our bootstrapping code and if I move this into another file for clarity we have a service we have a packages config which requires simple services and a program that's bootstrapping so if I run this now with F5 I need to set it as the startup project you see some slightly different outputs what you'll see here is a bunch of diagnostics output that I found useful in production environments so you're going to get last access times, file creation dates and locations and then obviously you see the messages that happened before. Also you'll notice that Simple Services mentions explicitly the name of the class that it started. That's because from the outset Simple Services was designed to support multiple hosted services in one runtime. So very trivially I'm just going to duplicate this class I'm going to call it my service 2 I'm going to say hi there too. We'll move that to another file. If I jump back to the program, I can add my service 2 and when I execute this, you'll notice we start up both my service and my service 2 and they both say the same thing. You hit enter and it'll exit. You may have been able to guess that we can do a similar thing in on stop. We'll just put exiting in here. And you have to be very, very quick to see this, but if I hit exit, it said exiting on the way out. That's the long and short of simple services. So instead of having this whole structure over here, where you need a dedicated Windows service project, a console application to bootstrap your code, and an assembly for your code, you can use one project hit F5 to run and have installation at the same time. 